Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're uh, going to start the next session here, and uh, I'll be your host. This session is called Inside the Arena. It's kind of about horses and uh, rodeo and stuff, so uh, I'd like to start it off with a few poems. This this first poem is a classic cowboy poem written by S. Omar Barker. <laughs> it's called Four-Footed Dynamite. They asked me what's a rodeo, and I told them that I know. But to put it in the language, sure the job that had me throwed. It's hooves and horns and hoss sweat and the smell of western dust. It's your any hands to wrestle and it's fucking rocks to bust. It's ropes to catch a calf with and picking strings to tie him down. It's the daring do of horseback men, the rain we find comes to town. It's brown and bulls to straddle and it's bones to bust and bruise. It's the Olympics of the saddle. If you win or if you lose. It's men that pay an entrance fee for just one chance to win. And when all they win's a busted leg, they take it with a grin. It's open horses smart enough that you'd think they've been to school. And so they have. It's years they've been to train as a rule. With some old cowboy teacher using patience by the clerk to learn them how to catch a calf and hold them like the earth. Of course there's rules to go by, just like any other game. But livestock sure can't beat them, so we don't come out the same. For though a ball game can be thrown, and sometimes, as I hear, you can't buy off a bucking bronc, nor fix a brain or steer. The Wild West ain't as roomy as it was some years ago, but still it sprouts adventure, so we've got the rodeo. With men that's known as cowboys keep their horse back on her bright. By rope and spur and saddle on four footed dynamite. Thank you. This next one is one that I wrote, and you know, if you guys watch the rodeo at all on TV, they have the national finals rodeo at the very end of the year. What well, well, rodeo cowboy end of the year. And, uh, so uh, this is a poem about the uh, National Finals Rodeo. It's called Gold Buckle Dreams. Well, there's a place down south of Nevada Way where the rodeo cowboys come out to play. They gather here just once a year to face the stock <coughs> and grow in fear. From roping calves to riding bulls, they ride with pride down deep in their souls. Behind the chutes they wait their fate, then mount the beast and ride for rape. The ladies run the barrels and the big boys wrestle steers. The announcer breaks the silence and the arena fills with cheers. Our work is done, or so it seems, it's just begun. Gold Buckle Dreams. Thank you. Well, uh, this is a, a horse poem. You know, every good cowboy's got to have a poem about his horse, so this is mine. It's called The Perfect Storm. There's a little sorrel pony that I like to keep close by. He's small and he's learning. This boy, he's full try. He's punchy when we're ranching, moving cows and running steers. Gentle when we ride a fence and calm when we're near. In the branding pen, we catch and drag and move towards the fire. Burn or hide and vaccinate. Of this, I never tire. Beneath me, storm is sleek and smooth, and he seems to read my mind. He works the cows and sorts them too. They were falling far behind. He saw a red in color with a blade straight down his nose. Three legs are white with stockings. <laughs> and I don't mean pantyhose. He's calm and patient in a roping box awaiting for the score. At my nod, he tracks that calf as I throw him my rope once more. Around his neck, I rope that calf and storm he hits the brakes. I jerk my slack and step off quick. A winning groan I hope to make. I flank him and I have time, and Storm holds him nice and tight. Two wrapped to half and hooey, we're in the money here tonight. He is the perfect ranch horse, and <coughs> we make the perfect pair. But no matter where we're headed, my Storm will get me there. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, uh, we're going to have a very good talent. Um, her name is Bridget Reed. Cowboy Poetry Gathering, we did a show honoring S. Omar Barker, and 
we all did a whole bunch of poems. And this is one of them. It's called Cowgirl's Recipe. To start with, take a horseback man whose face the sun is brown, whose legs are bowed little, not enough to miss the ground. Doesn't really matter if he varies his thumb and weight, nor if his hair is curly gold, or brown, or black, and straight. A grin will serve for flavor, but a somber fizz will do, as long as there are eyes that smile, especially for you. The back that slum would look the best above the saddle seat, but length don't really matter if it's straight and sure to meet. His hands should have some fingers, and his brain should savvy cow. A sh shoulder's broad and manly. Oh, well, manly anyhow. A face the wind is leather, but at whiskers do not scoff. For if a man can raise them, he can also shave them off. His nose, I'd like it sort of straight. But if it's not, I know that shapely noses did not make the men of Alamo. A long-armed man can reach the best to hold a loved one tight. But never mind if he's not short of courage in a fight. I'll take a man that's hard as nails, but tender too and proud, and one that sees the beauty in a flower or a cloud. My recipe is not the kind that measures by the spoon, for though I'd really like a man that loves a lonely tune, and one with smallish cowboy feet, and handsome too, of course, I think I'll choose my cowboy by the way he treats his horse. A quiet hand and gentle, but a firm one on the rein. A spur that's quick and just and sure, but not a tool for pain. I'd like a rider that's not afraid to snap a wild mouth, yet one whose ponies whinny when they hear his step about. Some girls have other recipes, and welcome to, of course. I'll measure up my cowboy by the way he treats his horse. Next up, we're going to have a young lady from Texas, and she's going to sing for us. She was the 2014 uh, female, um, female Performer of the Year, so let's give a big hand for Kristen Harris. Golly, that ain't fair to have to follow them. <laughs> Well, we're uh, talking about horses, and um, I've actually got a couple Mustangs I adopted, and they, uh, my mare, Velvet, she uh, has to listen to me practice songs all the time, and decided that she likes waltzes the best. So. This is one I wrote for her called Mustang Waltz. Well, she's mucking stalls, but she whistles a call, and her feet are heard rapidly. From the pasture comes a whirling horse to her girl, and slides to a stop right on.
Let's give you another big hand for Kristen. Next up, we're going to have a good buddy of mine named uh, Jeff Popamack, and uh, he's going to do some cowboy poetry for you. Like I said before, I was. Look at this body. How could you not tell I was a bullfighter? <laughs> I'm not a bull, never mind. So I was. I was a bullfighter. I actually fought, most of the time I fought down south. I uh, did uh, CPRA, Canadian Professional, PRC down here. That might explain why I walk funny. Most of the time like this. Anyhow, I want to share it a poem with you, and uh, what I heard the theme was in the arena. Of course, my first thought is rodeo. So this one's just called Scars. It'll explain a whole lot of stuff to you. There's a group of cowboys sitting on a campfire on a summer's eve, and they were sharing tales, each one becoming harder to believe. Well, they bragged about bulls they rode, and whined about horses that got away, but swore they'd get the better of the next meeting somewhere along the way. Well, the alcohol flowed freely as that evening turned into night, and those stories started surrounding their most incredible fight. Well, each battle was getting more and more gory, but unbelievably, each one ended in cowboy glory. Well, after all the fights had been won and they cleaned out the bars, those cowboys decided to compare scars. Well, Ray jumped up, parted his hair, said, looking right here. Well, he was pointing to some sorry looking scar that he swore he got hit by a bottle of beer. Well, the one on Joe's arm looked more like a burn. I don't know how you get a scar just pulling the cinch for your buddy's turn. Well, the stories that follow were pretty much the same, a jealous lover's rage and a crooked poker game. Well, those young guys, they quieted down as the old cowboys started to talk. Rumor was that some of them were lucky to be even able to be able to walk. But well, Rob said, look at the scar right here on my neck. They had to fuse my spine after a heck of a wreck. Well, Dave was proudly displaying a nasty scar on his hip. He said it got broken being bucked off that horse bull dip. And Chris says, this one covers a plate in my arm. That bull, who's your daddy, did it when I was protecting the bull rider from harm. But that whole crew, they calmed down. As old Mole got up and brushed off his lap, he whipped up in his shirt and dropped his drawers. His body was scarred like a road map. He said, every one of these scars tells a little bit about my life. Yeah, I'm even sure there's one or two courtesy of an ex-wife. Oh, you guys know my ex-wife. The great one, the big one on my chest, I got bullfighting at the Houston Fair. The ER doctor said I was lucky to even make it out of there. Well, the nasty one on my shoulders when it done got tore. A bad old bull tried to push me through the door. Well, the ones on top of my ankles was when they had to rebuild the joints. I think the bull that did that one scored about 95 points. The one on my left wrist, yes, she's a real beaut. That's when I got a caught between a bull and a chute. Well, I'll take a look at my knees. They were, be they were repaired and then finally had to be replaced. Just look how pretty those stitches were spaced. Well, I almost had my nose tore off and my ears too. I probably would have lost them all if it weren't for crazy glue. Yeah, every one of these scars tell, tells about where I've been. I'm just glad I retired before I done run out of skin. Thank you guys very much. This poem is called uh, 301, it's about a bull rider. A tall and lanky cowboy, no more than 21, stood staring in the bullpens, I am 301. Now, 301 was famous, a legend of his own. This bull, he was a grammar, hell bent and takes his groan. As the cowboy stood there wondering if he could ride this beast, the thought had crossed his mind if he should just head east. Many men had drawn this bull and Hoped to make the whistle, but most of them would bail too quick, as if their pants were full of thistle. 
There is yet to be a cowboy that does it for the day. He draws that lucky number, 301 he wants to play. So as the cowboy stood there wondering, 301 he looked him in the eye. This bull he seemed to crack a smile. He would make this cowboy fly. As the cowboy settled down atop the bronner's spine, he cinched a glove tent in his rope and nodded it was flying. The chutes came flying open in 301. He gave a jump. The cowboy dug his spurs in tight and sat hard upon his rump. About the second time he jumped, the bull began to twist. Spin to the left three times. The cowboy tightened up his fist. Then all at once the bull kicked up. His horns were leaning low. The cowboy thought of bailing off. Then he heard the whistle blow. He pulled hard upon his bull rope and came off in a run. He threw his steps in the air and shouted, Bye, Road 301. <laughs>
Another performance over and his job is done. The most of the grease paint is now gone from his face. His life as a rodeo clown has just begun. It's this new role he must now embrace. Years ago, he was in cowboy protection, making himself a target for fallen bull riders. Each outing added new bumps and bruises to his collection. Now he chuck and jive as his feet were on gliders. But his movements are now slowed by injury and age. He walks at a much slower pace. It's different as a rodeo clown taking center stage. His new job is well props, pranks, and filling in space. There's no more dodging bulls or making saves. And instead he tells jokes and trades jabs with the announcer. He can no longer do what he craves, jumping around the arena as if attached to a bouncer. Being a rodeo clown in the sport that he loves is about making people happy with antics and a story. He plays with the audience and a barrel he shoves. It's different than a bullfighter, you don't get the glory. Behind the grease paint, he's just like near you, and not the one making us laugh. He's turned a page on a life he once knew, but found new meaning in his rodeo path. So behind the grease paint, he lives as a clown. With a chance to make people laugh, he'll never turn down. Thank you. Most of you have seen the movie 80 Seconds, maybe. And uh, when uh, the guys are flying over Cheyenne in the helicopter, uh, Cody tells this poem, so it's called Legacy of Rodeo Man. Well, there's a hundred years of history, and a hundred before that, all gathered in his thinking, going on beneath his hat. The cold flame burns within him, till his skin's as cold as ice, and the dues he's paid to get here. Or with every sacrifice, all the miles spent sleepy driving, all the money down the drain, all the if eyes and nearlies, all the bandages and pain, all the female tears left drying, all the fever and the fight, is just one small down payment on that ride he makes tonight. Well, it's guts and love and glory, one mortal's chance at fame. His legacy is Rodeo, and Cowboy is his name.
But when it comes to love, you're always eight seconds late. Thank you for sound man. He's awesome. Not sick of me yet. This poem I want to do for you, it kind of, scars might explain why I walk funny, but this one's going to explain why I retired from bullfighting. It's called Crash the Gate. The sun hurt my eyes as the dust devil started to rise. He was the first bull out this night. My heart was pounding in my chest because I knew he was one of the best. The man I had a heck of a fight. This bull was a shoot fighter, and as that rope was pulled tighter, a cowboy slid into place. He tried to envision aid as that bull crashed the gate. A little determination on his face. The bull dripped, dipped, dropped, and spun. The fight for survival begun as this bull ride had gone to hell. He was caught in no man's land with the bull rope in his hand. It's known as fallen in the well. Well, the bull won this bout as that cowboy was knocked out, his hand still gripping the rope. The scene looked grim as the cowboys tried to save him, but I was his only hope. I jumped on that bull's back to try to give it some slack. It was still bucking, now carrying two. I pulled the rope as hard as I could. His hand popped out like I knew it would. And finally, that cowboy flew. Well, he was finally free. Now that bull turned on me. I would know what a run it made me pay. With his head planted firmly in my chest, against the chutes, I came to rest. I thought this was my last day. I was sitting there dazed and confused. I was bloodied and bruised as the cowboys rushed in to give, help me stand. I was covered in muck. I felt like I'd been hit by a truck, but I was grateful for the helping hand. My body was bruised and black, and the pain went from front to back. I had five ribs either broken or cracked. I was told I was done for the day, but there just had to be a way to help keep those ribs intact. Well, they bandaged me using tape and foam to help ensure those ribs didn't roam as I had 11 more bulls to face. Well, I fought with my ribs taped tight, even though I couldn't breathe right, but I made it with God's grace. Well, some of those cowboys rode, and my ribs didn't explode even with making saves. I was covered in blood and dirt, but none of those cowboys got hurt, and they thanked me with handshakes and waves. Well, I was spent, so back to my trailer I went. Oh, look, somebody left a bottle of Jack. I took a big slug to ease the pain, but I'm still alive to fight again. And yes, I bounced back. But I only had 10 days to spend to get those ribs to mend because then I was in another state. Well, my body was spent, so off to sleep I went, and I dreamt about bulls that crashed the gate. Thank you. Next, uh, we're going to bring up Bridget Reed again to do a poem for you. This is a little short poem that I wrote, and it has a horse in it, so it does fit into the theme. Ha <laughs> ha! And this one, I'm homeschooled. I live in Montana, and my mom and my dad homeschool me and my little brother, Johnny. And it's such a beautiful way to grow up. Because there's so much flexibility, you can go out, if it's a beautiful day, you can ride all day, you can go and hike or draw, and then you can do the school later. And so this is called The Beauty of Homeschool. I hear the door open, boots sound on the floor, a potential respite from the excruciating bore of the math I've been doing for an eternity or more, the beauty outside growing harder to ignore. No, don't get me wrong, algebra's fun and all, but nothing compared to a ride in the fall. I close up my books and file them away, run down to the trail and pass freshly stacked hay. My horse is there waiting, saddled up, ready to ride. Dad prepared her as a sweet surprise. 
Swing in the saddle, ready to go. They're feeling their oats after that first snow. Swing in the saddle, sorry. <laughs> Lope in the meadow through stubble and leaves. Splashing through the ditch, enjoying the breeze. Counting our hoof beats, measuring our stride. Round male circumference, diameter times pi. Hmm, pi. X amount of cattle equals 20 bales of hay. Somehow that math creeps in anyway. But there lies the secret to my homeschool success. School from the saddle is simply the best. Let's give another big hand for Bridget. This is a cowboy poem written by Larry McCorder, and uh, if you know me any, you know that I don't go too far without a rope. So uh, let me tell you, this poem really relates to me. It's called New Ropes and Skin Noses. Twas the day after Christmas, and the cowboy's young son, with his new nylon catch rope, put the dogs on a run. A tree was knocked over by his brand new string, and his mom soon regretted him getting that thing. He's a threat to us all, our home safe no more. If he heals me again, they go out door. Now, hun, just be patient. He's learning a trade, and not but through practice a good roper's made. Now, just look at the way he makes that thing whip, or the cat he just roped out, mom bit her lip. All day he kept at it, and he got all he could, and for just seven years old, he looked pretty good. His father would watch him all, swollen with pride, long since his mother had kicked him outside. The black goat and the chicken soon steered from his path, and not even Big Sister was safe from his wrath. The boy learned to throw true like chunking a rock, but soon the dogs bored him. He craved bigger stock. He snuck in the milk pen to stretch his line tight, but that wasn't enough. He sought the new height. <coughs> Opportunity knocked for just down the road. He saw his paw coming, a green colt he rode. Well, he shook out a big loop and hid by the truck. He'd double hawk that horse if smiled on my luck. When the horse came in view, he let his loop sail, but the loop went awry. <gasps> Up under his tail, like a vice that tail clamped and down his head went. He jerked little Junior, whose we well, know was got skinned. Well, the trio parted ways and all went elsewhere. <laughs> the colt to the pasture, while Dad split the air. <laughs> the boy ran to mother. That colt stole my twine. Tell Daddy to get it. I want it. It's mine. When at last Dad came in, his face was troubled. He held Junior's nylon when Collier was doubled. Come here, you little scamp, he said, spitting dirt. His skin face peeped at him around Mother's skirt. I'll teach you a lesson about healing a horse. But Mom, to the rescue, diverted his course. Why this morning you laughed and thought it was fine while he tormented us with that awful twine. And I remember you saying, he's learning a trade, not but through practice a good roper's made. The boy knew no better if you'd have set him straight, you wouldn't have got bucked off and come home irate. Now you think about it, twas you egged him on, you've reaped what you've planted, so just leave him alone. Well, that sure shut him down, and before long he grinned, he recoiled his son's rope and says, Come here, friend. Now this rope I give you is a tool, not a toy. But I guess you're no worse than me as a boy. And that heel loop you tossed was just a tad late. So when you throw a rope, throw! You'll miss if you wait. The steer's in the meadow, a journey in nose. A few shots he'll be needing today, I suppose. So let's go catch old Chubbs and I'll saddle Illwood and teach you to rope the creature as you should. They stroll across the barnyard, the grown-up cowboy took right there to heal him, the small, skint-nosed boy.
And one more time here. So I apologize. I am going to have to use my book for this one. Like I said, my memory is not quite as good as it used to be. I used to say I started writing poetry after I forgot remembering. <laughs> and sometimes I do have a hard time keeping some thoughts in my mind. So I want to share a poem with you that I, I wrote, especially for rodeo. And I used to do it the last event I worked, like the last performance. I used to do it every rodeo. So it's just called Rodeo Fans. No matter where you go, you can see them filling the stands. Some jacked out in their hats and boots. So yeah, rodeo fans are like that. Spills, chills, and rives galore. That's what they're here for. When they actually get started, they'll jump in their chair. Some get excited and they actually spill their beer. They'll cheer for the competitors. They'll cheer for the stock. They'll cheer, cheer for everybody when they make the clock. It really don't matter if the cowboy rides or if they fall. Rodeo fans will cheer for them all. And if it's the hometown hero that makes the ride, well, you can almost feel them well up with pride. They cheer for the bullfighter and they laugh at the clown. They're always happy to see the rodeo come back into town. You see them smiling in the sun. You see them smiling in the rain. I don't think I've ever heard rodeo fans complain. They're the best fans I've ever seen in my life. Heck, I even made one of them my wife. You know, you know what I'm saying and you know that it's true. So all the rodeo fans out there, a great big thank you. This is another Baxter Black poem that's called, Are You a Cowboy? When they ask, are you a cowboy, I try to consider the source. Is it someone who thinks I'm flush and's trying to sell me a horse? Or a downtown type in tennis shoes who's skeptical but courteous and never smelled one of our kind up close and's only curious? You see, the first guy really wants to know, are you any good around stock? Can you help a cabbie heifer and dally a double hawk? Do you know how to use a bozil? Can you mouth him and read the brand? He never says it straight out loud, but he's asking, Are you a hand? The other guy, who's just as nice, don't know a tit from a waddle. And when he asks, Are you for reals? I just quote the Greek Aristotle, who might have answered, Had he lived, son don't count on being lucky. To find out if he lives with cows, Examine his boots for Pucky. I like to think I'm good around cows and a pretty fair hand of a horse. But am I a surefire cowboy? I'm dodging the answer, of course. See, I learned to handle the question. Whichever one wants to know it, I ante up and say that I'm a better cowboy poet. Thank you. Everything seems so much lighter in the nighttime air. 
tough for an old guy. Trying to keep up with these young ones there. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got one last one to share with you. And as you're hearing them, you're hearing about wrecks and stuff. And not to say I was a bad bullfighter. It's just different back then. I fought before they docked the bull's horn, so when they say they were clown stickers, they were actually clown stickers. And this one's just called Ouch. <laughs> Once upon a rodeo a little time ago, I was a bullfighter, don't you know? I'd protect the cowboys when they fell, and I knew. I irritated those bulls as well. I got in their faces and I made them turn, and you could just see that anger churn. They tried to stomp me and hook me too, and more than once on the horns I flew. I got bumps, bruises, and cuts galore, but I always get back up and get in there for more. This one time I should have should have sailed on a horn, I wasn't paled. It looked really bad from all reports because that horn went through my pants and my shorts. The horn had punctured my leg and it stuck. I was impaled. And did it suck. But the bull flicked his head and away I went, like a round that had just been spent. I landed hard on the ground with a thud. My head hurt, and my leg was losing blood. I got back on my feet a little unsteady, and I tell you, my head was spinning. I wasn't ready for the bull to come back around. I couldn't believe the strength that I found. Well, I made it out, and I'm here to say, Never want a repeat of that ballet. Well, those activities have now been curtailed. And I never have to worry about becoming impaled. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening. I'll do one more poem here and then I'll uh, have Kristen finish it off. This is a cowboy poem I wrote. Uh, just a, it's just a little bit about me. It's called Born to Be a Cowboy. I was born to be a cowboy, to rope and ride and rhyme, rope and calves and riding bulls. This is how I spend my time. Now I was raised with values, and that's something to be told. There's ten principles to live by, and it's called the Cowboy Code. Being a cowboy ain't always easy. There's chores that need to be done. Working hard is just expected. But most chores are just staying fun. There's also time for playing with my family and my pards. Sitting around the campfire or doing me a hand of cards. I really like to saddle up for a quiet evening roam and put my thoughts and words together and come up with a poem. Thank you. Let's go for a ride, you go along. 
is a song that I wrote right after I learned to yodel. I think the yodeling bug with me, my voice has gone all wrong, you see. I can't talk, can't say hello, all I can say is hey -o. It must be the yodeling fever. I've got it now, there's nothing I can do. It must be the yodeling fever. Lay -o. I just yodel all day long, yodel till I sing a song. I can't stop it, drive me on that yodeling fever. Why don't you learn to yodel too? It really ain't so hard to do, and pretty soon you'll have the flu that yodeling.